I think I can summarize the state of the war effort in Russia invading Ukraine in the fate of one ship. And it really fits in both strategy as well as theme. Because if you go back 50 days, right around the beginning of this thing, you might recall Snake Island and the soldiers there that received an ultimatum from a Russian warship and apparently told them to go after themselves. The, the details are disputed, but we know that the incident did happen. Well, that ship has now been sunk. And so I, look, that is an interesting closing of that particular event that they went up against these soldiers who decided we're not gonna submit. We're gonna defy you despite your overwhelming firepower, the money that's gone into this, we're gonna defy you. And that has been kind of what we've seen out of Ukraine in the 50 days since. And it ended of course, with the Russian warship Moskva being sunk. And in fact, not that long before we went live, the US confirmed that it actually had been struck and sunk by a pair of Ukrainian missiles, the so called Neptune missiles that had been disputed up until that point. The ship had sophisticated air defense as well as offensive missile capabilities. It was actually capable of holding and launching more than a dozen long range cruise missiles. So that is now gone for the Russians, at least for now, since they don't have many ships of that class. This was the flagship of their Black Sea fleet. And in the wake of that ship, which had been being towed away after there was a fire, they believed they could get it to a port to be saved. A number of other vessels of the Russian war effort have now moved away from the coast because they no longer have the protective cover that was provided by some of the systems on the Moskva. Now, we uh, we know that it was critically damaged back on Thursday. It's a 12,000 ton warship, more than 600 feet long, and it's thought to have had a crew of nearly 500. Now, there is every reason to believe that although some of those, those crew might have died in the initial strikes from the missiles, it had been being serviced as large ships like this always are by a number of support craft. It is hard to imagine that they did not evacuate the crew. So if you're worried about the fate of the sailors, it is likely that they are um, that they were saved. Of course, Russia is not forthcoming with, with much information in that area. But if you wanna get an idea of how significant the sinking of the Moskva is, I wanna show you this little bit of video. This is from uh, in just the last day, state hosts and pundits on Russian state TV discussing what they thought about being sunk. I didn't want to talk about the Крейсер Москва это абсолютная повод для войны, стопроцентный, это флагман наш. Думать об уничтожении железнодорожных узлов, там, конечно, вопросики, они все едут и едут, я имею в виду лидеры, но лидеров надо предупредить, пусть дома надо сидят. Надо по Киеву, тогда они приедут. Вот что нужно сделать, вот этого не должно быть никогда. То, что мы сейчас видим на экране. А есть только один способ ответить, бабахнуть один раз и все. So if you're just listening and not watching, the one gentleman was saying this is now a cause for war, which I guess hadn't been being waged in the last 50 days. And the female presenter there was saying we should bomb Kiev, we should scare away world leaders. There has to be retribution for this. And we'll get to the retribution that's already come. But Farron, I wanna start with you. What do you make of this most recent wrinkle in the war? Um. <laughs> You know, actually, just watching that clip, though, I, I'm reminded of Sam Rockwell in Iron Man 2 when he shouts, "I don't speak Russian." Um, so it was a little confusing there for a moment. But no, for real though, it, it it makes me wonder what exactly is Putin's end game at this point. I mean, we have seen this remarkable show of resistance from Ukraine. Uh, they have also suffered tremendous casualties. That's that's absolutely true. As as has Russia at this point, you know, with tremendous troop loss. So I, I, I'm left to wonder when we see these, you know, very big victories for Ukraine, which this is. What exactly is Putin's goal here at this point? And we know he cannot turn around and just say, okay, everybody get out and come home. This is the kind of guy that wants to project this image that I am the biggest, baddest, toughest man that has ever controlled this country. So to withdraw is admitting defeat, he's not gonna do that. But how much longer can they sustain suffering these losses you know, from Ukraine? And that to me is the big question mark. We don't have an answer to that. I don't think we fully know what Putin is really even playing at anymore, just suffering loss after loss. 
and continuing to do it again. So it's a very troubling situation, I would think, for the Russians. I know they're angry. They say, oh, this is a declaration of war. You've been at war. You're not doing very well. And eventually, this is going to have to come to an end. But I don't know how we get there. I will say, however, I'm pleased that the United States has not sent troops on the ground. You know, mm-hmm. a little bit shocked almost that we haven't. Very happy we haven't. But I thought for sure by now, if it was still happening, the US would have said, all right, screw it, let's send them. And they didn't. So I, yeah. I do applaud the administration for not getting involved on the ground there. That That's still a very good thing and I hope it holds up. Uh, I mean, personally, I just like when any battleship is sunk um, cause as someone who doesn't believe in battleships. So I'm pro putting every battleship to the bottom of the sea. Mm-hmm. That being said, obviously uh, not pro the expendability of human lives. Uh, it is important to note that these are sailors. These are you know Russian military. This is not the indiscriminate killing that we've seen in cities all over Ukraine. But that being said, I think Farron's absolutely right. Putin, Putin doesn't care about his own soldiers. And he cares even less, obviously, about Ukrainians and Ukrainian lives. But he treats everyone like cannon fodder. And so it is very striking to see the things that are being beamed into the households of Russians every single day yeah. as their children are being sent off to war, which is they need to just buck up and fight harder. What what are they doing? Go there, swim to Kiev and go bomb them immediately. <laughs> like leave the ship, you know what I mean? Or like just just like that kind of like again, we've seen it so much in this country. Like mm-hmm. if anyone knows what it's like to sort of rally around a pig-headed war, it's Americans. Yeah. So like I see that and I'm like, "Ooh, I've like I know exactly who did this. Like we've all seen the people. They're still on television. The people who ratcheted up the sure. the war causes. <laughs> yeah, they're making tons of money, far more than us. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. well, uh, look, uh, we, we don't know how Putin is going to respond in the medium term. I'm going to get to the consequences in just a sec, and and I also want to give the Ukrainians a chance to respond. Again, I just want to add a little bit more perspective on this. Is this? I don't think that Putin cares at all about one Russian soldier dying, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. God only knows. That's not new in the Russian context, not caring about the you know quote unquote cannon fodder that you've sent to war dying. But in terms of ships like this being sunk, from everything that I read, the last time a Russian ship of this size and importance was sunk was World War II. And the last time in the world a ship like this was sunk was I believe during the Falklands. Like it has been decades. This does not generally happen. So, very significant there. And that was noted by a number of Ukrainians, including a member of parliament who said, Moskva battleship went down with missiles and ammo used to target Ukrainian cities and towns. Now it's part of the submarine fleet, which is fun if dark. Obviously, I personally. I agree with you, Francesca. I, I like when, when generally I would want to sink every one of these ships, but I would prefer to tow it to somewhere where it could perhaps serve as like the sourdough starter for a new uh, reef. Maybe that would be, I think, better. But in any way, in any event, President Zelensky thanked those who have shown that Russian ships can go to the bottom only, and uh, uh, the Minister of Defense said that now they have a new diving spot in the Black Sea, and a Russian sh- warship is a worthy diving site. Well, look, already the consequences are coming. Russia attacked a military factory near Kyiv. It's a factory that makes the specific type of missiles that were used to sink the Moskva. So it seems like a very targeted incident there. And just some added wrinkles here. I did see Ukraine is now using something called Clearview AI's facial recognition technology inside of its borders for a number of reasons, including trying to identify Russian soldiers that might have died already, Russian spies that might be embedded, and to fight misinformation. They've already used this for thousands of facial recognition searches. Apparently, they're identifying Russians and then contacting their families, which we can get into that if you want. But then I also have some fears. I mean, any kind of AI like this is gonna get some things wrong. What happens when you have a false positive on a Russian spy and it's a civilian? So I'm a little, I'm a little bit worried about how this might be used in practice and how you might have some civilians getting detained or perhaps killed 
if there are, there are false positives with this technology. I know we're just learning about this now, but what do you, what do you think about this? Well, you know, in any time you have these kind of mass surveillance systems, there's going to be problems. There's going to be flaws. There's going to be innocent civilians that get swept up in it. I mean, we've we've been living with that here in the United States for several decades now, and we know that it's never foolproof. It's never oh, we just getting the bad guys. No. Innocent people get swept up, lives can be completely destroyed by this. And so it is troubling to see them doing this, you know, just because, as you said, one wrong identification, you know, oh, your facial features are a little too similar to this guy. Yeah. And we could end up with innocent people being killed in the streets because they think they're a spy. That that's terrifying to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Ilhan Omar, Representative Omar, um, said this early on in this war, which um, was about cautioning us around the amount of weapons that are being sent to Ukraine. And I think that obviously in this moment, a lot of us are feeling helpless and feeling like, hey, maybe that's good. And at least it's not boots on the ground. But kind of looking at other places, Libya is a great example of the amount of, or, or really anything um, where the United States funds and puts a like allows tons of technology, tons of weaponry, sort of green lights, helps all kinds of new weaponry get sort of um, like piloted in these wartime scenarios. And then those things are never decommissioned, right? Those things mm -hmm. often can be turned against one's own population. Um, you know, obviously we don't want them to be used against innocent folks who aren't spies either, but just like it is, it just gets incredibly hairy. And again, these weapons of war, no matter what, just like in the United States, when you see them in Iraq and Afghanistan, huh, funny, you see them on the streets of Ferguson. Yeah. You see the same kinds of tanks, you see the same kinds of you know methods of subduing a crowd that the police are now inheriting from you know soldiers who were once abroad. So I'm generally cautious about this kind yeah. of stuff as much as I want this war to end. Farron, you were right to point out what we've been saying from the beginning is like, okay, we're just like, we're just like watching Biden. We're like, don't make a move towards sending soldiers in there. We want to support Ukraine. This war shouldn't have happened. War crimes are being committed literally every single hour. We do not want war with Russia though. And so far they haven't done that. Not only not sending in soldiers, but also not making some certain, some very specific moves that have been carved out as unacceptable. Whereas like, so you can't send jets, that would be too far. Uh, sending things that shoot down jets is apparently fine. It's weird how this works. Right. <laughs> but in this most recent package of weapons, this is some serious military technology. Long range artillery systems, hundreds of armored vehicles, helicopters as well. And if you can send the helicopters, why not the jets? We get into some weird philosophical differences, but Russia is now warning the US about the ratcheting up of the sorts of weapons we're sending. So we are going yeah. to have to watch that. Um, we'll see what Putin is going to allow. So far, he hasn't done anything crazy in terms in regards to the United States, at least. But we'll be watching for that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.